So it's another angry evening for me. I just watched the Cowboys make a pick that honestly sounded pretty uh, hallucinogenic. We drafted a guy named Taco Charlton, and everybody is losing their shit. Apparently he's not that good. And I honestly have not been following the draft that much because, as you probably know, I'm obsessed. I'm not going to stop until we figure out how to fucking kill Obamacare forever. And that's about it. Um, as you can see on the screen, there is another Ho Chi Minh Trail shipment coming down the media pipeline or highway, I guess, because it's the trail, Ho Chi Minh Trail. Um, this from a couple people that were given by the New York Slimes, the op-ed page for earlier today. Uh, their names are Nancy Ann DeParo and Phil Schillero. Schillero! His name st starts about right for what he's doing. Obamacare is a fucking failure. You have premiums going up. Over 100% in Arizona last year. And what is going... They, they still can't explain to me. I don't want to hear stuff like uh, David Shipley said a couple days ago about how Obamacare will be stable and the insurance companies are not leaving. First of all, they are leaving. And second of all, what's to stop them from boosting premiums again based on what they've been doing last year? You know, it's the same idea. And if more people are dumping the policy... And more of the people that are staying on the policy have pre-existing conditions or if they have um, just high maintenance, they're filing a lot of claims, the insurance will go up. That's just the way it is. The insurance will go up. The subsidies will have to be higher. They will keep having to appropriate money illegally. <coughs> That's what they're going to do. It's so bad <coughs> that the Affordable Care Act is making me sick, you know, physically sick. Okay, I'm exaggerating, using a little hyperbole, but let's read what they say. Imagine waking up to this headline, Trump saves the Affordable Care Act. Well, the title says how Trump could save Obamacare and help himself. So they're trying to use the self-interest, the narrow self-interest motivation to explain Trump. Okay. They say, it sounds far-fetched and would certainly be an audacious move, but President Trump could pull it off. He has already changed course when presented with new information. After all, China is no longer a currency manipulator, and NATO is no longer obsolete. Okay? <coughs> he never said the obsolete part about NATO. This, the China stuff, I'm not so sure. Um, in this case, improving the Affordable Care Act would not only be good policy for, million, for millions of Americans, but would also be far-sighted politics for Mr. Trump. The obvious obstacles are his repeated claim that the law is a disaster and internal Republican Party dynamics. But his endorsement of the House Republican bill last month ended in one of the biggest embarrassments of his first hundred days. And the next attempt and the new attempt this week to revive the effort might have a similar fate. So he shouldn't let his past criticisms preclude him from pivoting from repeal and replace to repair and rebrand. A rebranded Affordable Care Act will be consistent with the vision Mr. Trump offered during the campaign. And then he promised that everyone would be beautifully covered with much lower deductibles and taken much care of much better than they're taken care of now. He said he wouldn't cut Medicaid and would provide coverage for those who can't afford care. His former White House aides who worked on the law, health care law, ah, they came to the, what is this? This is the fourth paragraph, I believe. Fifth paragraph, if you count the two lines at the beginning. As former White House aides who worked on the health care law, we remember why reform was desperately needed. Our system was broken with 50 million uninsured, skyrocketing premiums, and no relationship between cost and quantity, quality. That was then. Now we have the lowest percentage of uninsured Americans on record and the slowest rate of inflation in health care spending in 50 years. Medicare beneficiaries have saved $27 billion on prescription drugs. Quality of care is improving, and nearly 600,000 unnecessary hospital readmissions have been prevented. Still, the law isn't perfect. Oh, so you're, you're being modest here. How generous of you, Parle and Shiloh. 
Shilio, I don't know what his name is, Shilio. The original House Republican bill would have made these problems worse. Premiums would have spiked for most families. Oh, they would have spiked now. The Republicans are responsible for the, not the, the people that have had the premium spiking until now. You know, those people aren't responsible. The, the people that are now trying to destroy your piece of garbage, they're the ones responsible for it. $24 million would have lost coverage, and over $800 billion would have been cut, cut from Medicaid, a program that provides life-saving help to severely disabled children, the frail, elderly, and the poor. Given this, Mr. Trump's support for the House bill was baffling. And the latest version, which tries to reflect the House Freedom Caucus principle of the federal government, should have no role in health insurance, moves even farther from his campaign promises. <coughs> okay, this is where they finally get into it. The answer to the law's shortcomings isn't repeal. Many House Republicans are caught in a classic inside-the-beltway dynamic. The more they repeat the repeal rhetoric, the more converted they become to the cause. But that self-perpetuating loop isn't the country's reality. There's still a winning hand for President Trump on health care. Where's the solution already? Why don't they just say it? But it's not the one he's playing. Repair and rebrand will take advantage of Mr. Trump's background as a businessman and his interest in expanding the private sector. What the Affordable Care Act needs most is more customers and federal officials taking actions to increase enrollment, strength, strengthen private plans, and ensure the marketplaces will fun function properly. With a few smart adjustments, this will foster a virtuous cycle of lower costs and expanded competition and coverage options for millions of working class voters. <coughs> First, Mr. Trump should eliminate any doubt that the cost should, I'm sorry, I might have to read this whole thing to you. The cost sharing subsidy is a limit out of pocket expenses for over 8 million Americans and stabilize the health, the insurance markets will continue. More on that later. <laughs> that, that's the, eliminate any doubt. You know what should, would, you know what eliminates any doubt that that's wrong? The federal court that ruled against them. He can do this by continuing to fund the subsidies through existing authority the authority was denied by the court, you fucking whores. And by fighting a House Republican lawsuit challenging the program. Another alternative would be to support a bipartisan permanent legislative proposal. Second, he should make clear that he will faithfully execute the law and instruct his Secretary of Health and Human Services, Tom Price, to maximize enrollment efforts and finalize rules that improve Affordability instead of undermining coverage that will give insurers the confidence to stay in the marketplaces and and lower premiums. So maximize enrollment efforts and finalize rules that that means that basically <coughs> this paragraph. Okay, I'm I'm gonna go through them one by one afterward. Okay, so they do number them. I'll go through them. Third, Mr. Trump should use his singular marketing skills to highlight the very real benefits of coverage. Past enrollment efforts have been constrained by insufficient resources and partisan attacks. Mr. Trump can create innovative ways to persuade people to enroll. Increasing enrollment will bolster private plans and marketplaces that are lagging and potentially make insurance cheaper in many states. Finally, the president is well positioned to persuade governors and legislatures in the 19 states that haven't expended Medicaid, almost all of which he won in the election, to cover 4 million more people. This would bring billions in benefits to their hospitals and help combat the opioid, opioid crisis. By keeping faith with his... <laughs> this is the... Word. Okay, I, I have to come back to all of these points. By keeping faith with his own voters, Mr. Trump has an opportunity to combine good substance with, full poli with good politics. Well, now that I got through all of that huge piling, uh, what is this, four, five-part piece of shit proposal, let me go through each one one by one, each of the five parts. First, Mr. Trump should eliminate any doubt that the cost-sharing subsidies, okay, if they're talking about the illegal appropriations from Congress, that without Congress congressional approval that the federal government has been taking in order to fund Obamacare. <coughs> And what they have to realize is that um, these liberal cucks cannot continue to demand that President Trump not comply with federal court orders when his stuff goes gets denied by federal courts, the Ninth District, as in the immigration travel ban, as in the, the um, sanctuary cities, um, denial of funding, 
Those two things, it's federal court denied it. Well, who, who denied the funding to Obamacare by taking money basically from con without the c consent of Congress? It was a federal court. So either, either you bitch-ass cuck Democrats, either you acknowledge that the federal courts are the people who rule and that they know the Constitution and that you don't have to wait to go to the Supreme Court, or you... <coughs> Encourage Trump to fight every single effort to go against, you know, what the what what the government is proposing and the federal courts are ruling against. You can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. You can't criticize the court and then claim that it's the check and balance to the executive. When under Obama, when this was ruled unconstitutional and that it was an illegal appropriation of money, illegally funding Obamacare, okay. <coughs> You claim that that's that's wrong and that, that you should appeal and that based and, and in fact the court allows the funding to go on as long as the government appeals it. Now all Trump has to do is drop the appeal and it dies. Obamacare basically dies and he should he should at this point. I'm I'll get to that later. At this point, the way things are going, and I had optimism at the beginning of this week, at the, but the way things are going now. I am way I am willing basically to say he should do the nuclear option. He should pull the funding by dropping that lawsuit. The Department of Justice drops that lawsuit. Obamacare basically falls apart. I'll talk about that later. Here's their second point says he should make clear that he will faithfully execute the law and instruct his secretary Tom Price to maximize enrollment efforts and finalize rules that improve afford. Basically, what the law did was this: insurance companies were being paid money basically by the federal government subsidies they were getting paid subsidies by the federal government and and okay they were getting their insurance policies basically marketed by the federal government so this is corporate welfare of the worst order okay if, if you're a bernie sanders supporter or if you're like me a Rand paul supporter this is the ultimate nightmare okay this is why obamacare is a big fraud if you if you remember until about February, if you had any had ever looked at the Obamacare exchange or had ever like looked looked at insurance there, you would get just waves and waves of emails from healthcare.gov asking you to enroll <coughs> by such and such a date, and that the you know deadlines extended every fucking day. The deadlines extended till tomorrow. The deadlines extended through Thursday. The dead, uh, the deadline. These fucking assholes through. <coughs> Every year was like that, you know, because I was researching it, you know, and then you would get the Boltons all the time. They're fucking updating it. Uh, we've extended the deadline. We know why. You know why? Because it was so bad. The enrollments were so bad that they just kept, kept having to beg people to join. And even then, even then, the majority of people who received health care coverage because of Obamacare did not receive it from Obamacare. That's the biggest secret. Okay, let me let me show the figures. Okay, this is a little hack outfit known as PolitiFact, and it's on the claim by Rand Paul last year, last January. Medicaid expansion drove health insurance coverage under health law, Rand Paul says. I'm not going to read the whole fucking thing. Basically, of 20 million co people who gained insurance under the program Obamacare, PolitiFact agrees that 14 and a half gained it through Medicaid in one way or another. Now, why do they call this a half truth? Because half of that number were considered eligible before Obamacare. So technically, those people would <coughs> would pretty much be, you know, uh, <coughs> not um, they they could have joined Medic Medicaid anyway, but. You know, think about it this way. They, they're claiming that 20 million more gained coverage because of Obamacare. But when confronted with the truth, it's not like they adjust the number downwards to say it was only because, because um, you know, half of the 14 and a half were already eligible. It's not like they go and say, well, what was that? Um, you know, 7.25, deduct that. Now you have 13.75 million got um, covered through Obamacare, you see. Sorry about that. I'm trying to do some math here for you guys. But 
it 13.75 looks a little less sexy than 20 million okay so what they did was a huge hoax this whole claim that obamacare insured so many people is, is complete nonsense it's 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 basically like it's basically lying uh, and and um lying to yourself in fact because if you if you really believe this and and then you want to deny to to the other people that the the pro medicaid for all people that Medi medicaid did the work i mean they, they they're right about that all those people got coverage under medicaid bravo bernie sanders idiots Th thank you for making our premiums go higher because the majority of people hated barack obama's shit legislation the quote-unquote affordable close quote care act and they picked medicaid instead because nobody can afford that shit insurance now let's go back i was on point let me see here point three mr trump should use his singular marketing skills to highlight the very real benefits of coverage oh wouldn't that be nice if he could market to the people you, you know the, the the media that always hates trump for promoting anything that has to do with himself for promoting his stupid stakes and promoting his stupid um, Mar-a-Lago and promoting uh, anything else, his, his, his daughter's uh, business and whatever, they're going to start, <coughs> you think they'd really treat it in good faith if, pre if, if Donald Trump was marketing Obamacare? You think they really would take him at, 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 uh, at, in good faith by, by uh, and <coughs> do, <coughs> do him a solid? Sorry, I, I'm sick right now. Sick of Obamacare. <clears throat> do you think they really would take take kindly to some marketing campaign by Mr. Trump for Obamacare, a program that he hated, a program that everybody that he campaigned for what was it, two years to repeal? I don't think so. Increasing enrollment will bolster private plans and marketplaces that are lagging and potentially making insurance cheaper in many states. Finally, the president is well positioned to persuade governors and legislatures in the 19 states that haven't expanded Medicaid, almost all of which he won in the election, to cover 4 million more people. This would bring billions in benefits to their hospitals and help combat the opioid crisis. By keeping faith with his own voters, Mr. Tr anyway, this, this is a fucking lie also. Um, they want to expand Medicaid more. You know what? Then start advocating for single-payer health care if that's what you want. You'll never get my fucking support, by the way. Single-payer health care is the next frontier of, of what I'm going to attack. But first things first, we're trying to kill Obamacare. And these Ho Chi Minh shills, Shilio and Shipley and – what's her name? And Nancy Ann DeParla. I think I called her Parnes for some reason earlier. But – um. These people are, are a disgrace to our country, okay? Deputy Chief of Staff for Policy for Barack Obama and Shilero, sorry, I've been butchering these names, Director of White House Legislative Affairs is a managing director of Shilero Barnett, a consulting firm. Lobbyist, lobbyist, lobbyist alert. So don't believe these clowns. And Okay, so the video still isn't that long. We're going to switch to a related topic. The Hill. <coughs> Sorry about that. The Hill is reporting the new Obamacare repeal bill is on life support. And <coughs> I'm not going to read any of this out. You know, you can you can go through it. What we have is another disgrace from the Republican Party. On the Democratic side, you have uh, fawning media, these idiots, these clowns that are pretending to lead this country, that pretend to lead an opposition. It can, you know, if you want to be progressive, go ahead. I, I mean, I don't have, I don't begrudge. Tulsi Gabbard, by the way, I really do respect. I'm not going to, you know, eat, I'm not going to say anything negative about her. In fact, I oppose everything she wants. I'm completely against, except for the war. You know, we were both on the same side against the Syrian war or whatever it is, you know, it's not really a war because we haven't gone in. Tulsi Gabbard is a fine, fine legislator. In fact, she's a fine-looking lady. But, you know, the rest of the Democratic Party is a bunch of 
They're basically a bag of, uh, of trash. And um, the Republican Party is, is almost the same thing. It's just a different color trash can. And these Republicans that did get together and did hammer out a bill that gave everything we needed to re really, you know, give, give back the power to who it needs to be, at least, at least more so than we've had in the past, these ones have to get the fuck out. We have to primary these idiots. And there was a compromise hammered out yesterday. I didn't get to issue a video on that because, first of all, I didn't want to issue a video on something I didn't know would pass or not and something that I didn't know many details about. And there haven't been that many details about. But what I do know is that the House Freedom Caucus, the only group in Congress that really is giving us an alternative to this establishment Republican fraud, Paul Ryan and, and Mitch McConnell, they're our alternative, and they have to leave the Republican Party because now, after meeting with this uh, centrist guy, Tom MacArthur, he's the, with the Tuesday group, these Republicans that are, I guess, whatever you want to call them, moderates, and they hammered out a compromise, these frauds, you know, Ed Royce, Adam Kinslinger, Mario diaz Balart. These guys have to go the fuck home, and we have to primary them. The Okay, why am I coming out much more strongly in favor of this as opposed to the last bill? What this would do, okay, listen very closely. This, this is not a perfect bill. This is not full repeal. Okay, so why am I so satisfied? I did want full repeal. I wanted to say, you know, fuck the Affordable Care Act. It can go kiss my ass and die for all I care. I, I, you know, if you think I'm talking crude and, and uneducated... Look at my page. Look at Bold Like a Leopard on Facebook. I've posted post after post after post of, of you know simple stuff. How the Affordable Care Act is cheating us. How premiums just go up in case after case after case. And what this bill does is not a full repeal, but what it would do is give states the power to dump everything related to Obamacare. Basically, all this nonsense, this... This thing about the pre-existing condition, I feel if you really want to take care of that and we're still doing the Medicaid nonsense, then let it be on Medicaid. I don't give a fuck. Okay, if these states want to expand Medicaid, let them expand Medicaid. If these states want to, you know, do their own uh, public option or whatever you call it, the, or the single payer as California is trying to do, let them do it and let them go bust. Let them go bust. And that's the whole point. This bill, do you understand? This is the bill. This is the bill that gives the – this is the scientific experiment, okay? Because – listen, look at me. All you out there, I'm looking straight at the camera. Look at me. That What this means is we'll finally get to see which states will sink and which states will swim. The states that are going to adopt these single-payer universal health care plans are often the ones that are already in buttloads of debt. Uh, California is the first that comes to mind, but New York, Connecticut would be the next one. Um, there's there's a bunch of states that are concerned. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Oregon and Washington do it. And watch them go bankrupt and beg the federal government to bail them out soon. Okay, we will see. We will see that there will be a exodus of, uh, it will make Egypt look like, you know, a, a revolve, just a small revolving door with one person going through. The, the, the exodus from Egypt will be nothing compared to, you know, I'm sorry to minimize that, but I'm saying it numbers wise, okay? Maybe not in historical context, but this will be a crazy exodus of businesses and people leaving those states when when it, the full effects come come down. And, and that's going to be because, you know, if, if a state, look, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I hate Mitt Romney, but... If Massachusetts decided to do uh, its own health care system, in his case it was basically the model Obamacare was based on, but let's say Vermont, let's say California, one of those states was to do a universal single-payer health, single health care uh, system, I, I'd be fine watching them basically drown in their own shit. And <coughs> everybody, all the quality... Um, Companies that, that are already fleeing California will basically do it in, in tw at twice the speed. I'm fine with that. So anyway, you know, I am publicly coming out. I'm saying this this may not be 
the greatest solution for everybody. But this will be the solution. That It will be the equalizer. This is the Excalibur. If you guys from the Excalibur report are watching this, I'm going to send it to you, by the way. This is the Excalibur that we destroy Obamacare with because they... They they will soon see that they can they can keep in those blue states the pre-existing conditions and the and the individual mandate and uh, all the other provisions of the bill, or they can you know come up with their own bullshit single payer system and and then we'll see what happens <coughs> when they have to boost taxes and drive away all their businesses and all of their um, you know, all, all the retirees, all those people, they're going to just dump the state like it's, it's uh, you know, old batteries. That's the way it's going to be. The way there's Ramon Bold Like a Leopard. The interview with the BLM guy, Kareem, Kareem Abdul Kareem Nafi, is also up. Um, interesting conversation. Uh, have a great night. Another video coming up, probably coming out this, around the same time. Have a good night.